Psalm 3. It's a shorter one, a little bit shorter. Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. I, I don't know if you guys all know the story of David, but that was a tragic, very tragic chapter in David's life. And people had declared that David, well, because of his sin, because of his failure, God wasn't going to help him. God was done with him. There were people, one in particular, who screamed publicly at David from a hilltop, throwing dirt, throwing rocks, just screamed. A man from the tribe of Benjamin, screaming, God is judging you now. That was David who was leaving Jerusalem, having to flee from this rebellion led by his own son. God is paying you back now, you wicked man. God, you bloody man, you bloody, just cursing him. One of David's mighty men said, let me go up there and pinch his little head off. Why should that dead dog be allowed to talk like that against you? And David said, let him curse. Let him curse. My own son wants to kill me. And you know, God didn't send him saying, curse David. Let him curse. He said, perhaps God will look good upon me for taking this cursing. This psalm was written surrounding that event. This was the song of that time. Verse 1, Lord, how, they, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Now you see this word sila. Check this out. Nobody actually knows what sila means, for sure. Scholars speculate that it was either A, a simple call to stop and just think about that. Just stop right there, pause. This was written as a song. And in the song right there, perhaps, just an uh, instrumental spot where you can actually just stop and think of the gravity of the words just spoken. Or B, it was just a musical connotation that's really irrelevant to us. But thou, O Lord, verse 3, Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me, Round about, arise, O Lord, save me, O God. For thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. And he ends with Selah. So I kind of take Selah like that, that it just means simply Stop right there and think about that. Pause. So you can see David pouring out his soul. He cries out to God. God, so many. So, and, and this is at a time where every time he turned around, he finds out that someone else that was close to him is part of this revolt, trying to have him killed. So many. And there are many that say, God, they're saying that you're not going to help me. They're saying that there's no help for him in God, but you, O oh Lord, you're a shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. You're the one that when it's all said and done, will lift my head. It's a statement of victory. Recalling God's past faithfulness, David said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I've cried before, and you've heard me. He's confident that he will again. And he said, I laid me down and slept. And I woke up again. Because the Lord sustained me. So he's recalling God's past faithfulness. And now stating in verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me. All around me. I'm surrounded by them. I'm not going to fear. And his appeal to God Arise, O oh Lord, save me, O oh my God. And he gets very vivid here when he said, You have smitten all my enemies on the cheekbone and has broken the teeth of the ungodly. Punch him in the face, God. 
Knock their teeth out. Right on that cheekbone. Break the teeth. They want to devour me. God, smite, strike. And he ends with salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. God is the only one that can save. Salvation belongs to him. 